Great. So, um, as I said before, if you do have a block, um, just bring that someplace where it's going to be handy because we'll be using it in a little while today. If you don't have one, it is not a problem at all. You can still do everything. It'll be just a little tiny bit different, but you can certainly still do everything. Um, we're going to start out reclined unless you prefer to be seated. You could be seated. You could even be standing if you wanted to. It's your practice and totally up to you. So for this first centering portion, we'll bring our attention to the breath right away, right at the center of where you feel the breath most readily. For some people, you feel it at first, maybe in the nose, the tip of the nose, perhaps the chest, perhaps the belly. Simply zeroing in on that focal point of the breath. And then taking a inventory or a scan, just kind of noticing what is here. Expanding that awareness from the breath to other spaces within the body, just simply noticing, noticing what is and then moving on to the next thing. Noticing sensations. Noticing areas of ease. Noticing areas of tightness. And then perhaps noticing the state of the heart, the state of the mind. Continuing to notice what's here. And it's okay. Whatever is here is okay. It can be here. Part of our shared intention for our practice today is this noticing what's here and responding to it with kindness. So if a little more rest is needed, allow yourself to have a little more rest. If a little more push is needed, allow yourself, encourage yourself for a little bit more of a push doing it all in the spirit of kindness towards yourself and, and what, um, what is needed in that given moment. So it's that kind listening and then that kind of kind receiving. Taking another breath or two here, another kind of scan, inventory. You'll be invited throughout the class to kind of take that inventory. And then if you do have that block, go ahead and take that block and place it between the two thighs. And just, you don't have to squeeze it super tight, but just so that it is there and it's not gonna fall down and you can place it on its most narrow edge so that it's not really wide or super wide. 
but just kind of that most narrow, um, most narrow edge. And from here, we'll take the low back and press down onto the mat with the exhalation and squeeze the abdominals in a bit with that exhalation. And then with the inhalation, slightly lift the low back and allow the belly to be a little bit softer. And then exhale, press and squeeze, drawing the low belly in towards the side, pressing the low back. And with the next inhalation, lifting the low back, pelvis will tip forward slightly, frontal hip points tip forward slightly. Continuing to take that movement through the pelvis, engaging the core when you press the low back and allowing the belly to kind of stretch just a little bit and relax as you lift the low back. And of course, you can do this with or without the black. It's totally fine if you don't have a black. And then perhaps with that spirit of kind of taking inventory of ourselves, just simply noticing other places in the body that this might affect the shoulders, the chest. And now with those exhalations, if you'd like a little bit more, you can kind of squeeze the block in just a little bit as you press the low back. And then a little bit of a release as you lift the low back. Finding some spinal and pelvic movement, spinal articulation. And then coming to about neutral with the low back. So it may be lifted just a little bit. We'll take our hands to the back of the head and just open up a little bit through the chest, allow the elbows to splay out the pectoral muscles to stretch, the chest to stretch a little bit. And then with the next exhalation, we're going to squeeze the block, take the low back down, engage the core, and then lift the upper back up off the mat into a crunch, drawing um, rib cage and frontal hip points closer towards one another. And then lowering down, Find just a little mini lift here in the low back. Elbows can come open, stretch through the front body. Pelvis and rib cage separate a bit. And then with that exhalation, they draw towards one another. Low back presses, core engages, chest lifts. And continuing that a couple more times at your own pace. Each time finding that stretch in the chest as you lower down and lift the low back and then that core engagement and strength in the front body as you lift and squeeze. And then perhaps taking that just one more time, exhaling, squeezing the abdominal area, squeezing the block, and then inhaling, releasing down. We'll release our arms to our sides and take the legs up and you can rearrange the block if you've got one. Um, just make sure everything feels okay here. Maybe shift side to side a little bit. It can be flexed and spine is neutral. So you're no longer pressing the low back, um, but you are finding that neutral spine. Knees on top of hips. And then we're gonna keep the same angle with the legs. So shins kind of parallel up towards the ceiling, feet flexed, and then Keeping the legs just as they are, we're going to hinge the hips down so that the heels come down towards the floor, and then we'll lift the legs back up again. Taking them down and taking them up, and you decide how far down they come. They may come down a little tiny inch or centimeter, or they may come down all the way. Um, it's more, much more about those felt sensations in the body than it is about what it looks like on the outside. And then we'll release from that. Take the block out just for a moment. We're gonna pull the knees in towards the chest and just rock side to side a little bit here. 
loosening up any areas that may have been strained in the low back or the hips. And then from here, we'll take the block between the two thighs, bring the arms out to a T, and we'll come into tip top. Again, you can do this without the block as well if that is better for you. So we'll take those legs a little ways over towards the right, use the core to bring them back to center, and then take them over towards the left, using the oblique muscles to move slowly and with control. Opposite shoulder will lift up a little bit, but not like, you know, way up off of the mat. So keeping that range of motion pretty small, controlled, finding stability in the legs. Upper body is working towards being fairly steady as the low body moves. And then perhaps one more time on each side. And releasing from that. From here, again, if you have the block, you're taking it and putting it just at the very kind of tailbone area. You don't want it up too high because then um, your tailbone kind of hangs off the back and you don't want it so low that it's like um, awkward or uncomfortable. So just kind of finding that sweet spot where the tailbone is supported, the hips are lifted slightly. And just taking a couple of breaths here, feeling that little bit of a stretch in the low back as the tailbone lengthens away. And from here, taking your right leg up towards the sky and giving yourself a bit of a stretch here. You can keep a bend in the left leg if you'd like to, or you can lengthen that left leg as well, digging the heel kind of down onto the mat. So now you're getting a bit of a hip flexor stretch here on that left leg and a hamstring stretch on the right leg. Lengthening out through the neck. Pressing out through the left heel, pressing up with the right heel. And then taking that right knee and hugging it in towards the chest. If at any point this doesn't feel good on the low back, um, it's totally fine to remove the block and rearrange yourself. This is just a different way to experience it, which may or may not feel good in your body. And then releasing that right leg, we'll take that left leg and bring it up towards the sky as much or as little of a bend of the knee as is appropriate for you on that left side. I'm just gonna rearrange my block and shift it a little bit. Hogging in. And then again, if you'd like, if it's right in your body, taking that right heel and pressing it long, lengthening it away from the crown of the head and getting a bit of a hip flexor stretch on that right hip, hamstring stretch through the left side, reaching the crown of the head in opposition from that right heel. And then we'll take a bend in the left knee, hug that left knee in towards the chest, press the right heel away, double check in with the neck. And then bending both knees, we'll remove that block and hug both knees in towards the chest once again, take a little rock side to side, little massage for the low back. And we'll take both legs over towards the right. Left arm can reach out towards the left as we come into a supine twist. Taking a little stretch for the chest, for the sideways, for the hips. 
coming back through to center and taking those legs over towards the left. Now, right arm can reach out towards the right. Left hand can provide a little pressure, giving you a bit more of an um, outer hip stretch on that left side. Coming back to center, we're going to come on to all fours. And if you don't want to be on all fours, you could actually stay um, reclined for a little while. What we're going to do here is we're going to take our kind of strong, solid position in this all fours position. And then we're going to take our um, left knee and just kind of bring it in towards the chest and then take it out like in a half circle and then bring it around. So that left foot can be flexed as you circle that left knee around. So again, if you don't wanna be um, on all fours, you could do this standing, like holding onto something, or you could do it from a reclined position. There's always options here. And then let's reverse direction of that circle. trying to hold the rest of the body as steady as possible. So core is super engaged here. And then when that knee is away from the body, you can take that left big toe edge of the foot out to the side. We're gonna take our right arm up and then we're going to thread the needle, bringing that right arm through and you can lie down kind of on your right ear um, with that left leg out to the side. Again, if this doesn't work for you, you could take the same shoulder stretch either from a seated or standing position, totally fine. Now this is kind of awkward, but if you wanna play around with it, you can. You can hook your right um, hand, you could take your first two fingers and your thumb and kind of hook that around the left big toe. Now that's awkward um, and it may or may not feel okay in your body, but I just want to give people different options to work with. And then from here, coming all the way back up, if you want, you can curl under your right toes or top of that right foot. Think back almost like in a kind of child's pose type position. Those left toes will be skyward and you can walk your hands a little bit out towards the left. You can do this from a seated position as well. If you prefer to be seated, you could take your right knee kind of, or your right foot in towards the left inner thigh and fold forward in that seated position. Just wanna make sure people have options to work with. And then let's come back to center, walking those hands back towards center. Come all the way back up and we're going to circle that right knee now. So finding stability in the um, all fours position. We're taking that right knee and just drawing like a half circle right around, keeping that foot flexed, lubricating the hip, working the core, outer thighs, inner thighs, glutes, staying really active there. And then let's reverse direction of that circle, finding as much stability as possible through the core. Again, remembering you can do this from reclined or standing if the all fours is bothering you. And then we'll take that right leg out towards the right and take that left arm up as we thread the needle coming to the left shoulder, left ear, right leg reaches out towards the right. If you want to experiment with hooking the fingers around the big toe or perhaps the ankle, feel free to take some time with that. And 
breathing here. Beginning to make your way up. You can curl under those left toes if you want to, or stay on the foot. And we're going to turn the right toes a little bit more up towards the ceiling. Walk the legs out, walk the hands out towards that um, kind of right side of the mat. Sink back over the left heel. Feel that inner thigh and hamstring stretch on the right side. Torso is a little bit at a diagonal. Your left hip will be kind of on top of your left heel. And then walking back upright. Right away, we'll come into a forward fold. So just kind of gathering your feet underneath you about hip width distance apart. Little bend or big bend in the knees. And just taking a few breaths here, maybe pedaling the feet a little bit, shifting the weight, pressing through one hip and then the other. On the next inhalation, finding a halfway lift, lengthening the torso forward, expanding through the chest. And then exhaling, knees are soft, pull forward, rooting through the feet to rise, coming all the way up to standing, reaching the arms up here. And exhaling, releasing the arms down. From here, we're going to just play with balance a little bit, setting us up for our sun salutations. So a little softness here in the knees, crown of the head reaches up towards the sky. And we'll turn our hands so that the palms of the hands face forward in an effort to keep the chest open. And this YouTube just so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. And then from here, with the feet about hip width distance, we're going to put a little more weight into the balls of the feet. Not so much that you feel like you're going to fall, but just shift that weight a little bit forward so that the toes grip a little bit more. Get to hang on a little more actively. And then shifting the weight over towards the right. So you're on the um, right side of each foot. So pinky edge of right foot, big toe edge of left foot. Again, not so much so that you feel like you're going to fall over, but that subtle shift. And then shifting back so that the weight is a little bit more in the heels. Toes and balls of the feet feel a little lighter. And then shifting over towards that left side, pinky edge of the left foot, big toe edge of the right foot. And then circling back to center and see if you can find all of those sides, all of those four corners of the feet plugging down onto the mat. Keep that bit of softness in the feet and that sense of rootedness. Feet can kind of grip down a little, toes can grip down a little bit. Lengthening up through the crown of the head, standing in mountain pose. Inhaling, reaching the arms up here. We'll take the left hand to the right wrist and reach over towards the left. Lengthening through the right side body, lengthening through the crown of the head. Inhaling center and exhaling, switching sides, pushing out gently through that left outer hip, getting a stretch through the left side body. Inhaling center and exhaling, sweeping the hands around, taking them to the low back, lifting up and open through the chest. And then we'll exhale to fold forward. Hands can come to the hips so they can sweep out. Inhale, find the halfway lift, lengthen. And then exhale, fold everything in. Let's start out with everything on the right side. So we're going to step the right leg back into a lunge position. And you can stay high in your lunge, especially after doing all of those um, various different kneeling things. If it's um, 
fine for you. You can come down onto your right knee. You could tuck something underneath the right knee if you wanted to. And make your way, whichever position you're in, into more of an upright uh, posture with the upper body. And we're gonna take a twist without hooking the elbows. Just kind of take a little twist over towards the left. So keeping the frontal hip points facing forward, the outer hips hugging in. And then from there, if you'd like, you can add that twist with the um, right elbow just on top of the left knee. Working on rotating the chest. My hands are not at my heart center, but kind of in an ideal world, they'd be a little closer. Um, kind of just a place to aim for, kind of the chest, uh, kind of that center with the hands at heart center. And then coming back through to center, planting the hands, and we'll come into a halfway splits. Now, again, if you um, do not want to be on the knee, you do not have to be on the knee. Otherwise, we're going to come back and kind of taking that right hip, right glute, kind of over that right heel, left toes angle up towards the sky, and we're hinging forward over that left leg. Now, just to show you, um, you could do this from a standing position with a bend in the right knee, hinging forward over that left leg with left toes kind of facing up towards you. So I don't want anybody to ever feel as though they have to be on the knees if that's not um, right in your practice. And then we'll walk all the way back forward to a bent left knee. Stepping both feet back to plank position on the knees or not, from the head reaches forward, heels reach back, core is engaged. And then again, on the knees or not, lowering all the way down to the belly, untucking the toes and inhaling up for a small cobra pose, rooting down through the pelvis, reaching forward with the heart and exhaling, lowering down. You can take your left hand underneath the forehead and take a bend in the right knee, right toes can be pointed. If you have a strap, you could use it. Um, if you can hook your hand around your ankle, your foot, whatever you can grab a hold of. If you can't grab a hold of anything, you can keep a bend in that knee without grabbing a hold. We're drawing the heel kind of towards the glutes, continuing to root down through the frontal hip point on that right side as you draw the heel in. And you can keep your head resting on your hand, or if you'd like to, you can come up onto the left forearm with the chest lifted a little bit more. And that might not feel good. It feels good in my body, but it may not feel good in yours. So just kind of coming back to those felt sensations in the body, seeing what the body is telling you and then responding with kindness. Releasing from that, curling under the toes, we're going to press back to downward facing dog. If you don't want to downward facing dog, you could take child's pose or stay on the belly for windshield wiper legs. Pedaling out the feet just a bit. Reaching the hips skyward. And we'll take the right leg up. Take a bend in that right knee, tuck the left hip opening up through the inner thighs, through the hips. And then from here, you can take your right knee kind of all the way towards the right wrist. We're gonna come into pigeon pose. You can come reclined if you don't like this version of pigeon pose. You're walking your left leg back, fairly long and lengthened out from the left hip. And you can fold forward here, giving yourself a stretch through that right piriformis muscle, right glutes, allowing the body to rest and use what you have around you. If you have a blanket or pillows and that feels good to rest from that, definitely arrange that for yourself. If your weight is all the way poured over onto your right hip and you don't feel much of a stretch, See if you can equal out those frontal hip points a little bit more so they're both kind of facing downward. Let's 
Taking a few more breaths here. And then beginning to walk your way back upright. We'll just take a quick transition here. Don't feel like you have to spend a lot of time in down dog. If you wanna spend a little time there, feel free. Also feel free just to kind of start walking the feet back up to the hands for your halfway lift. Whenever you're ready, taking that halfway lift, reaching the chest forward, feeling the weight a little bit more in the balls of the feet, chest is lengthened. Exhale, knees come a little softer, weight goes a little more into the heels. And then keeping that rootedness evenly through all sides of the feet, inhale all the way up to standing, reaching up here. And we'll take the right hand to the left wrist as we reach over towards the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, switch sides. Feeling that stretch to the right side body. Inhaling, center. And exhaling, sweeping the hands down, lifting the chest. On the next exhalation, hinging forward, folding forward. Weight evenly distributed in the feet. Inhale, halfway lift, weight comes a little more to the balls of the feet. Exhale, folding back in a little more in the heels. And this time we'll step the left leg back into a lunge position. You can be down on the knee if that's okay for you. If that doesn't feel good, you know that there's lots of options for you. You can be in a high lunge instead of a low lunge. From here, taking hands kind of towards the heart. Lifting up nice and tall in the torso. And then taking that rotation of the chest over towards the right, hugging outer hips in. And then if you'd like adding that hook of the left elbow, taking that twist into a prayer twist, aiming the heart, the hands towards heart center, keeping length. And exhaling back to center, either coming into that standing position or you can curl under the toes on that left side, kind of sink back, right toes come up towards the sky. As we come into a half way split, getting a nice hamstring stretch here for the right leg. Spine is long and lifted. Another breath or two here, checking in with yourself again, just kind of scanning over, noticing what you notice. And then walking all the way forward, curling under those left toes, stepping right foot back to meet the left, into plank position, long through the torso, heels reach back, crown of the head reaches forward, navel hugs in, and just kind of bringing that muscle memory of when we had the block between the two thighs. See if you can draw those inner thighs towards one another. Really strong, active pose. Exhaling, lowering down to the belly. Untucking the toes, inhaling up for cobra. Upper arms nice and close to the body. Pelvis roots down. Exhale, lower. Take that right hand underneath the forehead. And we'll take a bend in that left knee down. You can take that left hand, draw the knee in, or not the knee, the um, whatever you call it, that ankle, the heel, draw the heel in towards the glutes. Keeping the frontal hip points pressing down. You can stay resting on the hand or the forearm, or you can um, come up onto that um, kind of, so you're standing a little bit more on the elbow or the forearm, lifting the chest. And exhaling, releasing down from that. Remembering options to do 
the reclined pigeon pose or press back to downward facing dog, taking that left leg up, now opening up through the left hip, bending through the knee, and then taking that left knee up and over towards the left wrist, walking back with the right leg and sinking down into that pigeon pose on this side. Breathing here. Again, if you've got props, if you've got blankets or pillows around and you wanna rest the upper body on those, feel free to do that or walk forward and maybe make a little um, stack with the hands and the forearms and rest the forehead there. And taking a few more breaths here, just kind of feeling into the sensations in the body. They may be intense in pigeon pose, um, but they shouldn't be painful. So using the opportunity to take that inventory of the felt sensations in the body, and if there's things that need attending to, um, just attend to those. If there's a subtle shift that needs to be made or something doesn't feel good and you just kind of need to come out and reset yourself. If you know of a different variation that you like better, that's maybe a little more challenging in your body, then definitely those are options as well. On the next inhalation, coming all the way up, you can kind of tuck those right toes under, bring the left foot back to meet the right, and walk the feet up to the top of the mat for your halfway lift, reach the chest forward. And exhale, folding everything back in. Rooting through the feet to rise, coming all the way up to standing, arms can reach up. And we'll take the left hand to the right wrist, reach over towards the left for a side body stretch. Inhale, center. Exhale, switch sides. Inhale, center. Exhale, sweep the arms back. Inhale to lift the chest. Draw the shoulders, uh, shoulder blades towards one another. Chest open. And then nice and easy, come back to that neutral standing position. Finding that sensation that we worked with before a little bit, all edges of the feet rooting down, palms of the hands can come open, chest lifts, tailbone reaches down towards the ground and the crown of the head reaches up towards the sky. If you wanna hold on to something for balance, please feel free to do so. Um, and we're going to take the right foot to the inseam of the left leg for tree pose. And so with that, you can have the leg down low. Let's turn this way briefly. You can have it down low. You can have it kind of anywhere, as long as you're not putting unnecessary pressure on that um, knee. So just making sure that that all feels okay there. We'll breathe here for a few moments. Any arm variation that you like is fine. Hands can be at the heart. They can reach up, they could be on the hips, they could be holding on to a wall or a counter. Noticing the edges now of that left standing foot. See if all edges, front, back, right and left, can be equally connected down, rooted down onto the mat. We'll take a transition here for which you can step out completely or you can transition right into warrior three, taking that right leg back, hinging forward. A bit of softness in the left standing knee just to kind of plant that left foot a little more equally down onto the mat. Right foot can be flexed. And then a little bit more of a bend in that left knee. We're gonna step that right foot back to warrior one. Once you get there, rearrange the feet as needed. Those right toes are gonna to angle up towards the top right corner of the mat. 
lunges in the left knee, torso turns forward. Hands can come to the shoulders, elbows will reach back and we'll exhale to push the hands away and inhale, pull the arms back as if you were grabbing onto something and pulling it back towards you. Exhale to push away and inhale to pull back. Taking that action in the upper body at your own pace. Continuing to notice felt sensations in the body. They might be a little more intense as we hold this a little bit longer. And then from here, arms will reach up. Or they could come, hands could come to the hips if that's better for you. And taking the hands down to the low back, lacing the fingers, drawing the thumbs down the back, lifting the chest. Humble warrior is an option here as you take that left shoulder kind of to the inner left knee. Your hands can also come down to your block or chair if you have one. Head is heavy. Taking a few more breaths here, continuing to keep that left outer thigh kind of hugging in towards the midline, it's not splaying out to the side, crown of the head, get it towards the center of the mat. And then inhale, push all the way back up. Make sure you're not feeling too dizzy. Just kind of reset yourself here. Release the hands. And again, option to step directly into the next pose or you can step that right foot forward next to the left as a transition. So what we'll do is we'll come into a single leg chair pose. So you can kind of take that bend in the left knee and then take that right leg and cross the right ankle just on top of the left knee, holding onto a counter, a chair, a wall, or hands at heart center. Breathing here. Continuing to keep the bend in the standing leg, keep that length through the torso, all sides, all corners of the left foot rooting down onto the mat. And then releasing that right foot and finding that equal standing position, little softness in the knees, hands can turn open, chest is open. Feel the sensations of the feet rooting down equally. And then transitioning some of that weight into the right foot. You can take that bend in the left knee, open the left leg out to the side for tree pose. You can manually scoop it up a little bit higher on the inseam of the right leg. Feel free to hold on to something or not. And I found over the years that it's amazing just like what one fingertip can do if you're losing your balance a little bit and you just tap one fingertip, um, it can kind of get you sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes get you just, just enough to be uh, avoid losing your balance completely. Continuing to maintain that link through the crown of the head, that rootedness through the right foot. And then option to step out of the pose or option to transition directly into warrior three, reaching that left heel back, reaching the front of the head forward, scooping the belly in. Continuing that conscious effort to maintain all sides of the right foot rooted down onto the mat. And then bring a little more softness into that right knee as you step the left foot back for warrior one, turning the chest forward. Hands can come to the shoulders, elbows reach back and we'll exhale, push away and inhale, pull back in. Taking that at your own pace with your own breath. Continuing to take note 
of all sides of the feet rooting down. And then continuing to take note of the felt sensations in the body. And sometimes sensations can be extremely intense, not just in our yoga practice, in our lives, of course, is what I'm talking about. Um, and if we can tune in to the felt sensations just as they are, sometimes it can ease a little bit, knowing that they're not permanent. They're going to come and they're going to go. We can breathe through it. And then the next time those hands pull back in, you can take the fingers, place at the low back, lift the chest, maintain that strength and stability in the legs as you bow forward to humble warrior. If you don't like the arms in this position, hands can come down to the block, or the chair, or the mat. Crown of the head is heavy. Right outer hip comes in to maintain kind of an alignment with that right knee. So right hip, right knee, and right ankle are all kind of in line with one another. And one more breath here. And then inhaling, pushing up and out, making sure you're not dizzy before you start that transition. Hands can come to the heart or you can hold on to something. We'll take that bend in that front right knee and then cross that left ankle just on top of the right knee for single leg chair pose. Keeping the bend in the knee as if you were really in chair pose. Encouraging within your ability to take that left knee away from the body. So we get some openness here in that left inner thigh. Strength in the right leg as you continue to work on that balance and stability. And coming back through to center, just shaking that out a little bit. And we'll make our way down to a seated position on the mat. Turn this way. So if you have that block, great. If you don't, not a problem. We're going to take that block between the two thighs. Hands can come behind the legs. And we're establishing that sense of leaning back, that length through the torso that little bit of instability so that the core has to work extra hard. And then heels can float up or you can um, keep heels planted. Legs, arms can come um, reaching forward or you can keep arms planted. Taking a few breaths here. Any variation is fine. Any time you need a pause is fine. And releasing that, taking that block out, maybe taking a little stretch either forward or back. And keeping that block handy, coming back into boat pose, whichever variation you choose. Block out in front of you if you don't have a block, arms out in front of you. And we're taking that block and just packing it from side to side as you maintain stability in the low body, moving the upper body. Anytime there's strain in the back, give yourself a pause. Maybe come a little bit higher up, or a little bit more lean back, or plant the feet back down if they're lifted. And 
and releasing down from that. We're gonna come all the way down onto the back. Just take a couple breaths here before we do a few more movements. Feel that felt sensation of letting go in the body. Sometimes it's easier to feel that after an effort than it is at other times. But just that felt sensation of letting go. Experiencing that now as it is. We'll take the heels a little bit closer, perhaps towards the glutes, and come into bridge pose. And again, um, block as an option, giving that block a little bit of a squeeze and coming up into bridge pose. This is helpful um, just kind of in the sense that it helps with keeping the knees about hip width distance um, and keeps the feet a little more equally grounded when you have that block. Um, just so you get that feedback from the, from the block that you're not splaying out too much with the legs or um, coming in, kind of not kneeing. Feeling that length in the front body, lifting the hips perhaps a little bit higher, squeezing the glutes a little bit, and exhaling, articulating down from that setting the block off to the side. And we'll cross the right ankle just on top of the left knee. Then gently press that right hand away. Just kind of taking the right inner thigh away from the body with that right hand. And then from here, option to take regular bridge pose or option to come up to the single leg bridge pose, encouraging that right knee away from the body. Keeping pretty evenly distributed onto the two shoulders and shoulder blades, the two arms, back of the head. And releasing from that, taking a hold of the back of the left leg and hugging everything in for reclined. Pigeon pose. And if you'd like to, you can straighten your left leg, taking that left heel up towards the sky. Continuing to lengthen the crown of the head. And releasing from that, we'll take the right leg down, right foot down, and cross that left ankle just on top of the right knee. And then take that left hand and gently press away the inner thigh, creating a little more space there. And then your choice for regular bridge pose or this single leg bridge pose, really getting a deep um, stretch through the inner thigh as you draw that left knee away from you. Find balance and stability on that right leg. Making sure the neck feels nice and neutral in line with the spine. Weight evenly distributed onto that right foot. And releasing all the way down from that. Grabbing a hold of the back of the right leg now. And maybe rocking a little bit side to side. Settling into stillness. If you like that sensation of extending the right leg up, you can certainly do that, or you can keep the bend on the knee. And then re-bending the right knee if it was lengthened. 
replacing the right foot, replacing the left foot. And taking any other postures or stretches or movements that you want to take before we get settled in a quiet space um, as an option for Shavasana or for our resting pose today, you can take the block and place it in the back where it was a while ago at that space at the tailbone so that the um, so that it's not at an at a area that's uncomfortable, but just kind of finding that spot where you feel supported, there's nothing straining. And um, for our resting pose, if you'd like to, you can stay in this position with the block tucked under the tailbone, knees bent. And of course, any other variation of any type of resting pose is um, up to you. Seated, lying down, standing, whatever you'd like. Coming back to that sensation of breath. Noticing where you can kind of zero in right away. Just the felt sensation in the belly, the chest, the nose, the throat. Allowing the attention to rest at that most obvious point of contact. Just breathing here. Whatever is occurring is okay. I have a short reading to share with you from Melody Beatty, Journey to the Heart. When you're tired, take a break. Take time to recharge your battery. Energy isn't something you have, it's something you are. To give and give, to put out without taking in depletes your battery. It drains you and runs you down. So take time to, re to rest, renew, and refresh yourself. It isn't wasted time. Recharge, choose what energizes you. like to thank you all so very much for 
sharing your practice and sharing your positive energy with each other and me. Namaste.